Bitcoin ready to soar to 30,000? Or is Bitcoin really going to bottom after this short pump that it's had over the last six weeks? Well, that's the question that many investors are asking, top leaders in our crypto industry, whether or not we've seen the bottom and we're going to the upside and staying there for the future years to come. That question, many have already provided some form or another, an analysis of where Bitcoin will be in the next two to six weeks, two to six months, two to six years is the thinking that I put behind the actions that I take in order to invest in these markets. My name is Angel, El Gallito de la Sierra, aka Crypto Keeper. I do the research so that you don't have to sit back, listen, and enjoy. I want to give kudos and thanks to Euler and Isaú with the Rooks Agency, owners of Lenusa, the Latin Entertainment Network. USA who made this hat and gave it to me for free. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. They are, just for the record, they are not sponsors of this video. But I respect those two guys and I enjoy spending time with them. And I was just with them a couple of days ago. So anyhow, they, they gifted me this hat and they're working on some apparel that I am developing with them that's going to have some really neat crypto uh crypto crypto stuff that i just want to wear and promote the crypto tokens that i'm invested in so anyhow let me jump right into it many experts are saying that bitcoin is or has reached a significant level of a bottom or near a bottom that if you don't get in now it might be too late it might be too late for you to get in in the future well I don't know if that's true or not and a lot of them make a good use case for reasons why they feel they're nearing the bottom and here's one crypto has taken a devastating blow Many of you know that Bitcoin, March, April, more, more specifically May of last year, Bitcoin was scratching 70,000. And we are at 2021, hovering around that $20,000 mark. If you take the difference between 68,000 and 22,000, Bitcoin has dropped about 60 to 68% of its all-time high. So arguably, many believe that when looking at historical charts, history will tell you that any market that dumps below 20 to 30% has recorded a bottom and has recovered from those bottoms over the course of five to ten years so cryptocurrency is a relatively new market it doesn't have the historical indicators that real estate or stock markets or commodities have given us over the course of a 50 to 100 year period. So it's difficult to really know for sure whether we are at that bottom. But what I will say as an investor, a bottom nonetheless is better than an all time high. And so if an all time high was a year ago and we are comparing our lows to the all time high all-time high a year ago then to me that's a really good indicator that regardless of where it's at right now is this bottom a good opportunity for people to jump in 
And I would say, in my own opinion, with my own money, I would say I have, and yes. So that's really the short and sweet. The bottom for anyone who is interested in investing is going to be a, calcu a calculative decision that you've made based on where the market has been in the past. And there has been a few historical charts that point to this happening over the course of the life of Bitcoin. Now, there have been reasons why we have had cryptocurrency crashes. And the reasons are because of some of the leading industries and people who hold a grip load of money influence the market in such a way that it reacts when things go wrong. So 2016, 2017, Mount Gox, uh, there was a couple of other, like a Canadian organization, and there was a, a lady and a gentleman, and I can't remember these names, but I remember the stories of these people who were running Ponzi schemes and schemed people out of their money by selling fake uh, or, or creating fake cryptocurrency exchanges or cryptocurrency currencies um, that people were buying, promising, you know, X returns within a certain amount of period of time. And all of that created um, problems in the crypto industry in 2016, 2017. All of those are mostly gone. Now we're dealing with a whole different situation. You're dealing with uh, big exchanges lose, using leveraging and big exchanges um, offering stake rewards and and all of that um, is a is a is a good sauce for disaster. And so. I agree with Kevin O'Leary when he says, hey, don't leverage your money. Like, don't leverage and you'll never go to zero. I think those were his words. And I reckon with that a little bit, but at the same time, it makes a lot of sense. If you're investing in crypto and you're very conservative, I am very con conservative in crypto, that I think crypto is gonna be here forever and so, the buys that I'm making today are not for a quick get rich investment for tomorrow. And so when I approach the market with that mentality, like hodling my crypto and not worrying about, you know, where it's gonna be at six months from now, 12 months from now, or 18 months from now, then I'm going to fare well probably with whatever investments I make in crypto even today because say say that we go down 20 30% from where we're at right now. And this is this is for you. Say you buy um $10,000 worth of Bitcoin and you buy a half of Bitcoin when it's hovering around 20,000. Let's just say you do that. Or let's say you buy Ethereum at 1200, it's at 1500. Let's say you buy Ethereum between 1000 and, and, and 1500. Here's a difficult thing to make as an investor is removing the spirit of greed. Greed will wreck you. Greed will lead to nothing. It eventually will uh, evaporate to nothing because Greed is a seed of poison. Understand that. That if you're doing things for greed, it might work out once or twice, but in the end, it never works out. I have seen so many greedy people. You know, let's use uh, Bernie Madoff. You know, perfect example of greed. You know, cheating people out of their money. And for a while, he was living lavish and hanging around with the most well-known billionaires and buying yachts and mansions in Manhattan and what have you. But over the course of, I don't know, 
however many years, I think it was a couple decades, life was good, but then what happened? Everything came down. And it wasn't so much about Bernie Madoff's um, landing, you know, landing in a prison and ruining his life for the rest of his life. It was everyone that loved him, his closed ones. I'm sorry, his close family members, you know, grandchildren and children and very close relatives done, harm. You know, you can't repair those kinds of those kinds of uh, 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 relationships. They're just gone. They're gone for, forever and they're scarred and they're damaged. And so that's what grief does. It eventually, uh, it eventually costs you more than just what the money you had at the time that you were doing it. So I say that because many people have to deal with greed so that you can then begin the journey to success. Greed never leads to successful accomplishments. Let me just say that. So I'm not a greedy person. I am only investing. I had a, a person comment in my in my video and said, Angel, um, it was all about like what happens if you lose all your AMP, your heavy investor in AMP token. I said, hey, listen, I replied and I told him, if I lose all of my crypto, including AMP tokens, I can sleep at night very comfortably. I'm not gonna contemplate anything because I'm a conservative investor and I'm not investing to get rich. I'm investing to get wealthy. And those are two different things. But I've learned a lot in my, in my journey in crypto, enough to know it's volatile. These things happen all the time. Crypto has gone through these seasons numerous of times and people come out and say, it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world for Bitcoin. It's the end of the world for Ethereum. It's the end of the world for all other cryptocurrencies. And that's true. It might be the end of the world for some, but not for Bitcoin, not for Ethereum. And I strongly feel not for any of the other ones that I am invested in, which means that if I'm willing to wait, you know, five, 10 years from now, I think if they're around, they are going to be explosive. You will not find the prices you find right now. And that's my point, that if you feel you're waiting for a bottom that is based off of some industry leader saying, wait, 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 Bitcoin 10 grand is coming, Bitcoin three grand is coming, and you don't get in because you feel, well, why would I buy a bit, a half a Bitcoin at 10,000 when I can buy two or three when it hits 3,500 or more, more uh, specifically the, the, the current sentiment of 10 to 12,000. Hey, great if it comes, great if it comes, then we jump in even more. But if you're greedy, greed is gonna keep you from jumping in at the right times because of the greed. So, that said, I just want to end with this and tie all of what's going on to a very wise move that you might want to make on your behalf. Right now, we know there's a lot of instability going on in not only crypto, but real estate as well. And all of it is correlated. Many people say it's not. Many people will prove it's not. But I really don't understand how they can prove it's not. We live in a system that is influenced by global financial institutions. And any time there are disruptions in our global system, specifically talking about financial institutions you are going to you are going to be shaken in all of these other industries real estate the uh, 
the vehicle or car uh, car companies um, all of that all of that the stock market all of it is connected all of it is correlated don't be blind to the realities of the world when there's a when there's a war going on in another country don't be blind behind the scenes every country is involved every country leader is involved you don't see it all because that kind of stuff we see it after the fact so you almost have to move with intuition my intuition tells me there's a lot of things we haven't really seen yet that's why a lot of leaders like Peter Schiff and um, you know other people like Peter Schiff uh, Robert Kiyosaki and um, and uh, oh man uh, Ray Dalio those are three names you got to go check out. Those are three good names that are going to give you some, some interesting information. But it's just information, guys, gals, relatives. It's just information. Take it however you want. But I'm telling you, I feel, based on all of that research and listening to those three, I'll give you one bonus one. Go and pull up the state of the economy. I think it's the state of the economy with... Um, uh, um, oh, uh, Patrick Bet David. Listen to what he says. He talks a little bit about real estate. I've listened to Dave Ramsey. I like Dave Ramsey, but listen to both arguments. Dave Ramsey is saying, hey, there's not going to be much of an issue with real estate. Go buy. And then Patrick Bet David really shares with you a lot of data as well. And he, he, uh, um, he comes out and says, hey, Bet, uh, um, Dave Ramsey is um, is absolutely incorrect in his views about real estate. And he shares the reasons why. Well, I've been in real estate for a very long time, too, as an investor. And I can tell you right now, I think, I think a year from now, two years from now, we are you can't see that far ahead. It's difficult. And again, this is just my opinion. I think the government's gonna hike rates higher than what they are right now. I started investing in real estate when interest rates were 8.75%. 8.5%, 8.5, I think it was 8.9. I was even quoted 9% for an investment property. And uh, you know, back in those days, 9% um, with 20% down, uh, B of A loan. And I know real estate, and I can tell you when it was 9%, properties were so pressured, no one was buying, sellers were discounting just to get rid of some other properties, and there was a handful of properties out there from, from which to pick from. So, as an investor in real estate, I am telling you right now, do not be fooled. Listen to macroeconomics. Listen to the things inside your mind and inside your heart. Listen to that voice. If the voice is telling you, hey, I'm going to go out and buy because this house is going to double in 12 months, well, listen to it. But I would caution first any major decision you make without research. Go and research. Go and listen. Look at history. Look at what has happened in the past. I've done plenty of videos to explain market conditions, you know, 10, 15, 20, 40, 50 years ago. Look at those patterns. Look at what the rates were. Look at what the feds did. Yes, we're living in different times, which is why I think we are going to have an interesting next, you know, five years because our monetary system's broken. Our uh, state of inflation is is out of whack. Nothing makes sense. People are living more and more in the streets. That doesn't make any sense. Healthcare costs are out of control. I mean, look how much it costs to take care of an elder. I have elders in my family. My mom's sick, and I'm talking. It is extremely expensive. Um, and my my mother is poor. She is a is a woman who has Medicare and each year the insurance is coughing out about a half a million bucks. 
<laughs> it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, could you imagine if you had no insurance, you'd be forced to die, plain and simple. So look at all of those things, assess, make assessments. I am telling you, I don't feel houses will double by next year. Quite frankly, I think they're gonna have a major reset. I cannot predict what that major reset's going to be, but with war, with macro uh, economics and global issues, I highly doubt that we're gonna be in a better state in the next 12 months than what we are from today. Meaning, we're gonna be probably worse in 12 months to come than right now. That's all I have for you. I hope you enjoy this content. Thank you so much. To all of you who are commenting, I've been replying without a beat, without missing a beat, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Aquí el gaito de la sierra, el kikiri kicks. Checking out. Take care.